And when you get the choice to sit out or dance, I hope you dance. Leanne Womack. Hello and welcome to Yoga with Melissa 364, how to balance in dancer pose. <laughs> I was going to say yoga pose. This is real yoga for real people so that you can move better, feel better, and connect with your true nature. And this is the last yoga class for 2016. 2017, the first class will be class number 365 and you will be able to do one class a day for every day in the year. So that's very exciting. And our intention is to post a class on the social channels in every day of the year so that you can do one, if you so wish, <laughs> one through 365 starting on January 1st. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> um, I have a testimonial for you today from Carrie on YouTube. She says, thank you, Melissa, for teaching this class that was two weeks ago on the how to balance an eagle pose. I love twirling around. That was the class I kind of did the whirling dervish pose. I have to say that doing the foot connective tissue on the membership forum totally helped with my balance and also in grounding my shins on the ground in all fours on the mat. One of the postures I struggle with is cow's face arms. I think at, and that at the end of the class, I asked you, which, which yoga pose do you find most challenging? And I meant to ask you which balancing pose you find most challenging because I got all kinds of yoga poses, not just balancing poses, which is okay. Now I know which pose you find most challenging too. Um, so cow's face arms, that's going to be in here today for you, Carrie. Also, boat pose is difficult on my low back, so I tend to avoid it. If boat pose is hard for your low back, there could be a good reason for that. That pose you should avoid if you have any disc issues in your low back. So listen to your body on that one. And so Carrie says, thank you again for all you do to prepare such wonderful teaching classes for real people. So thanks so much, Carrie. I appreciate the time you took to leave the comment on YouTube. And also since Carrie is a member and she mentioned that class that I recommended for members prior, to the class. Today, my recommendation for members is to do the upper back rehydration sequence that's in our membership community. We're going to be doing a lot of poses. Dancer pose has a little bit of a back bend in it, and that will just get your lower upper back rehydrated and the connective tissue up there loosened up for dancer pose. I actually did that this morning on my soft foam roller, so I am all set. Thanks to all of you who take your time to leave your comments on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, the membership community, on my website, on iTunes. We love hearing from you and about your yoga practice. I want to thank Squeezed for my yoga clothing. This will be the last time until next year that you'll see me in a dress for December. I want to thank all of you. I have 22 donors now who have donated to December. Thanks to you. I personally raised over a thousand dollars and our team has raised over two thousand dollars to help end human trafficking. We had eight people on our team this year. My goal is to bring over 20 people on our team next year. And so you could be on our team next year. I would love to have you. It's been it's been amazing to um, to be part of this. You could wear a squeeze dress like this one. <laughs> Oh, and boys can be on the team too if you want to support us because real men don't buy girls. <laughs> that, that is true. I've been loving the men's photos. Men can be part of the team by wearing a tie or a bow tie every day in December too. So we were just talking to one of Tim's friends right before we started filming and he was very curious to know more about it. And I said, his name's Andrew. I said, Andrew, why don't you be on our team next year? You could wear a bow tie or a tie. He works, uh, he has a kind of... Well, he has a construction company, so he would stand out wearing a tie every day in December, and people would ask him about it. So I think he, I think he actually might join us next year on our team. So it would be nice to have a man on our team next year, too. Okay, uh, I'm also wearing these leggings from Squeezed. I'm rambling today with the yin-yang. And also thanks to Dusky Leaf for our props. Today you are going to need a few props. You're going to need a strap. You're going to need a yoga blanket for your underneath your knees. You're going to need a bolster and you're going to need a wall. So we're going to start today lying on our stomachs. 
for front lying Shavasana. Oh, we didn't do our mantra, but you know what? I didn't write it down today. We're going to just go right into... So let's just take a moment to say that our practice be bring us peace and harmony, that we be in peace and harmony together in our practice as student and teacher. And I will make sure I put my mantra in next week as well. Okay, so we're going to lie with our hands crossed underneath our forehead on our bellies and just take a few breaths here allowing yourself to settle into the ground Feel the pressure and anxiety of the day release and let go into the earth. Let your chest be heavy, let your pelvis be heavy, let the fronts of your legs be heavy. And feel yourself supported by the earth here. So I'm going to, as you rest here, read you the lyrics from Leanne Womack's song, I Hope You Dance. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. You get your fill to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leave you empty handed. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit out or dance, I hope you dance. I hope you never fear those mountains in the distance, never settle for the path of least resistance. Living might mean taking chances, but they're worth taking. Loving may be a mistake, but it's worth making. Don't let some hell-bent heart leave you bitter. When you come close to selling out, reconsider. Give the heavens above more than just a passing glance. And when you get the choice to sit out or dance, I hope you dance. So as this class is being released, we are making the transition from 2016 to 2017. And one of the many reasons you may sit out or dance could be your balance system. And as you know so far from our series on balance, your ability to balance is made up from your somatosensory system, your proprioceptive system in other words, your vestibular system, and your visual system. It is your central nervous system that receives feedback about your body's orientation from your proprioceptive system, your vestibular system, and your visual system. And then it generates corrective and stabilizing reactions through your body by activating your muscles that helps you to balance. So reflect on the poem and the teachings so far and where you're heading in 2017 and begin to form an intention of what you would like to receive from your yoga practice today. What it is it that you're creating, sustaining, releasing or rebirthing in your life and how can your yoga practice help you to do that?
We're going to come from our stomachs into our first yoga posture. So you're going to walk your elbows back underneath you so that you're coming up into Sphinx pose. And in Sphinx pose, you're stimulating your proprioceptive system, your somatosensory system, by taking information in through your skin, the palms of your hands, your forearms, but also through your joints, your wrists, your elbows, your shoulders. And then you can add in information coming in through your vestibular system as well. So in this one, I'd like to do chin to chest. And then head up. Uh, for me, that uh, movement does is not good for my neck because of some car accidents. And whiplash for me. So for me, I'm just going to go eyes down and eyes up. And then you're going to walk your elbows down and wide and you're going to turn your head to one side. We're going to continue to stimulate your vestibular system. You're going to lift your head into the center and then turn it and lower it over to the other side. Lift your head in the center, turn and lower over to the other side. Lift in the center. Turn and lower over to the other side. So this is the rotational movement of your vestibular system. And then come back to the center. You're going to walk your elbows back first into Sphinx Pose. And you can stay here. Or you can come up and take your hands wide into Seals Pose. So it depends on how your body's feeling today um, and the how your back's feeling. You'll feel pressure in your back, but you don't want to feel any sharp shooting electric pain here. So some interesting statistics about your vestibular proprioceptive and your visual systems. Most people, uh, if your systems are functioning normally, rely 70% on their proprioceptive feedback, 20% on their vestibular feedback, and 10% on their visual feedback. Now that is if they are balancing on a firm flat surface like this hardwood floor or like a flat sidewalk sort of like most surfaces that you can encounter day in and day out. However, when you're on an unstable surface, and I encourage you to practice on unstable surfaces as much as possible. So like the unstable surfaces that you see me on in my vlogs when I'm hiking or on the rocks down by the beaches here on Vancouver Island, it changes, it almost turns upside down. And then your vestibular feedback, that's from your inner ears when you're moving your head around, that changes to 60% of the feedback. Your vision turns to 30% and your proprioceptive feedback goes to th or, uh, 10%. So it's almost completely upside down from normal. Well, what is your <laughs> the normal conditions? So the training we're doing with our vestibular and visual systems in these yoga classes is really quite beneficial because it's unusual that you're going to fall on a flat surface like 
you're probably pretty okay on your flat hardwood floors. Um, you're probably okay on smooth, stable surfaces. So um, training your vestibular system so that it knows how to respond in unusual circumstances, trying things with your eyes closed is good training for when you are on unstable surfaces. Okay, let's slowly lower back down and take a pause here. on my forehead. <laughs> Just wiggle your hips from side to side. And we're going to go back into your proprioceptive system here. So you're going to bend your right leg in, reach around and hold on to your right ankle or the inside of your right ankle so if you reach around and hold on to the inside of your right ankle that would be good because it really opens up your chest you're going to inhale here if you can't reach you can use your strap here exhale pull your heel away from your buttocks and that will lift you up also stretches out your quads so proprioception means that your skin muscles and joints they all contain sensory receptors and the proprioceptors that are sensitive to stretch or pressure in the surrounding tissues. And it helps your brain to recognize where your body is in space, even if your vestibular and visual symptoms are compromised. So for example, if your eyes are closed or your ears are plugged. So, if, you know, if you have a cold or something like that. So your proprioceptive system can take over then. So right now, your hand is taking in information through your skin, your joints, through your wrist, your elbow, your shoulders, your quad muscle, your knee, your wrist, elbow, shoulder, and the back. Loads of sensory information coming in through the, your joints, your muscles, and surrounding tissues. So let's slowly lower down and try this. On the other side, after we just take a moment to pause here. And let's go ahead and set this pose up on the other side. You're going to reach around and hold on to your ankle or the inside of your ankle on the other side. Inhale here, exhale, pull your ankle away from your quad and then lift up and feel all the pressure in your muscles and joints, the surrounding tissues and the information coming in through your skin here. And even close your eyes so you can be more attuned to that. And you can release that down. And we're going to push up onto all fours and draw your knees underneath you. If you have any knee issues, you can lie on your back and hug your knees into your chest. Otherwise, you're gonna come into child's pose here. Okay, from here, we're going to come and put the blanket out on the ground just so you have some extra support underneath your knees. You just need the back part of your mat covered. 
and you're going to come onto all fours, slide your right knee forward, your left knee back and long, and you're going to fold forward over your bent right leg. And here, I'll just stay here for a moment. So you could lie on your back and do figure eye of the needle or figure four here instead if this is too much pressure on your knee. We're going to come upright in this pose. And from here, we're gonna add some vestibular. So just look over your left shoulder and over your right shoulder, left shoulder and right shoulder. And then I'm gonna give you two options here to open up your quads at the back. Either tuck your left toes under and lift your left knee, or you're going to bend your left knee at the back. And if I find it helps just to roll out and roll back in. And you can use your strap here as well. So sensory information about things like motion and equilibrium, where your body is in space is provided by something called your vestibular system. And your vestibular system is the part of your ear that includes the utricle, saccule, and three semicircular canals. The utricle and saccule detect gravity in front to back or side to side movement. And in contrast, the semicircular canals detect rotational movement. So let's just look over your left shoulder again and over your right shoulder again. And then you can go ahead and release this pose out of your body. And we're going to do this on the other side. So come back onto all fours and you're going to slide your left knee forward to your left wrist, reach your right leg back and long. And then we'll do the forward folding pigeon to begin with just to prepare your hips a little bit. And as I said before, you can do this lying on your back with the keyhole stretch or the figure four stretch if this is too much pressure on your knees, that would be a good alternative. And then we're going to come into the back bending version of Pigeon. So you'll come upright into the back bending version of pigeon. And I'll give you two options here. You can turn your back toes under. We'll, we'll do the uh, looking over your shoulders first. Stimulate your vestibular system. Or you can bend your back leg and Reach around and hold on. Okay, and then you can let this pose out of your body. And for the next one, you probably just want to swivel your mat um, I don't even know how many degrees that would be. 90. 90 thanks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and perpendicular. perpendicular to the wall. 
and then fold your mat uh, your blanket again this is <laughs> this one always makes me think of my student Gwen from when I taught in Toronto okay what you're gonna do for this when you need the wall and it's a real humdinger for the quads <laughs> it's probably the best quad stretch I know so be excited people <laughs> I don't think this dress was made to wear a mic pack on the back, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> it feels like the bus line keeps dropping and dropping. Okay, so you're gonna put your knee in the wall, in between the wall and the ground. You're not gonna put your knee in the wall. You're gonna put it between the space between the wall and the ground. And that might be enough, you might stay there, okay? Or you might lift your front leg and that might be enough you might stay there or you might come upright and you might this might be enough so for me you want me to do the other leg okay okay we're gonna be doing both legs anyways but okay so you come up and place your hand on your opposite quad so for me, this is enough. But for others of you, you may be able to lean your back against the wall. And if you need more, you can take your top arm up. So see what works for you and your body. But you know, remember, if you're feeling it, you're doing it. You don't need to keep going. And my quads, they're screaming. We can feel it. Let's close our eyes so that you're working balance by taking your visual system away here. Relax your shoulders. Okay, and then let's do this on the other side. So now you'll put your other knee between the wall and the ground. And you could stay here if you're getting enough, if you're feeling something happening in your quad here. Or you can bring your other foot up and you could stay here. Or you can come upright, stay on your knee here. If you need more, you're gonna lean against the wall, lean back against the wall. And if you need more than that, then you take your arm up, same arm up as the leg, okay? But if you've got enough happening, you'll know, you'll feel it in your, in your quad here. Keep your shoulders relaxed. <laughs> Keep space between your teeth, teeth so your jaw stays relaxed. Let your tongue float in your mouth. Close your eyes so you're challenging your balance system. Okay, <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm thinking about my students a lot that I used to have in the studio. <laughs> I have one student, she used to say, that's the opposite of McDonald's. It feels good after you do it. <laughs> oh, it's like, it doesn't feel good when you're doing it. It's like McDonald's feels good when you're doing it, but it doesn't feel good after. <laughs> okay, oh, I feel like we need a moment after that. Okay, it feels good. Now, we're going to do a moving one, a lot of moving, so really challenging your proprioceptive system, where we're gonna come from lunge to standing, and this is, this is one that one of you told me is the most challenging balance one that we do, and I would agree it's a challenging one. So we're gonna move our mat back, and then 
Tim's going to need a moment to adjust the camera for sure. Okay, so basically you're going to start kneeling at the back of your mat. And then you're going to come upright to standing on your knees. You're going to step one foot forward. You'll come up. Bring your knee up, hug it into your chest. And then take that same knee behind you. So you're doing a quad stretch, which will probably feel like almost nothing now that we did that one against the wall. Bring your knee forward again. And then come back down. Left leg behind again to kneel and sit down. So tons of information coming in through your proprioceptive system here. Now we'll do this on the other side. So you come up. Your left leg is going to come forward again. You're going to come up. Your right knee is going to come up and forward. Right leg comes back behind, quad stretch. Right knee forward. And then we're going to take that right leg behind. And you're going to sit back and kneel down. Okay, so let's do that again. Come up, this time your right leg comes forward, left leg comes up, behind quad stretch, up, and back, and down. And then up, left leg comes forward, Right knee comes up, back, up, back, and down. Okay. Up, right leg forward, left leg up, back, up, back and down and these are good ones to do outside when it's not winter <laughs> anymore and then up left leg forward knee up behind up back and down should we do one more on each side up right leg Knee up, back, knee up, left leg back, and down, and then you come up again, and we want to do left leg forward, knee up, right leg back, knee up, and then down. Okay, great. And then... We're going to take a step back with your right leg. Hips are going to face the front short edge of your mat. You're going to interlace your fingers behind your back and open up through your chest. And then let's do chin to chest again and look up, okay? And if you have a neck issue like me, you're just going to go eyes down, eyes up. So do what works best for you and your body. Great. And then we'll switch sides. So this time you'll take a step back with your left foot. Turn your hips to the front short edge of your mat. Interlace your fingers. Open up your chest. And this time let's do scoops around in front. So now you're taking in different information more information through your visual system. OK, 
Okay, and then let that out of your body, and you're gonna need your strap for the next one. So just put your strap around your, over your shoulders. Stand at the front edge of your mat. Take a step back with your left foot. And you're gonna turn your, you're gonna turn your hips to the long edge of your mat now. Sink down through your sit bones. You're going to internally rotate your left arm, bring your left arm up your back, and then you've got your strap there to hold on to, and bring your right arm up and over. So you're doing cow's face arms with warrior two legs, okay? And then we'll look over our left shoulder and over our right shoulder. Over our left shoulder, over our right shoulder. And then turn both your feet towards the long edge of your mat. Turn your left toes out and your right toes in. And let's switch your arms. So you're gonna internally rotate your right arm up your back. And your left arm's gonna come up. I don't know about you, I'm curious to hear. I find this cow's face arms kind of nice in this. Well, they're easier standing, but then they feel almost easier in this warrior two position. I wonder if it has something to do with the openness of your hips. Very interesting. Let me know in the comments. And then you're gonna turn your head again. Did I do warrior one on both legs? I did, didn't I? I think I did. Okay. And then let that out of your body. And then I think we are ready to do our dancer pose. So you're going to stand on your left leg bend your right leg reach it around and hold on to the inside edge of your foot with your thumb on your big toe extend your left arm up you could hold on to a wall or a chair here and then you're going to pull your heel away from your buttocks you can focus on something that's not moving here And then we'll try this on the other side. So this time you'll stand on your right foot, bend your left leg. You can hold on to your ankle or the inside of your foot. You're going to tuck your tail under, pull your heel away from your buttocks and allow that to open up your chest. Focus on something that's not moving here. Okay, from here we're gonna come into Uttanasana, standing forward fold. So a nice version of this is to use the wall actually, just to lean against the wall and fold forward. An even nicer version is to put your back against the wall. Especially if you have upper back, neck, or shoulder pain.
then we're going to come up slowly in for our last posture before shavasana you're going to need your bolster and we're going to lie on our backs and do a reclined twist Okay, you're going to place your bolster on the side of your mat, lie on your back, take your arms out to your side, bend your right knee, press into your right hip, tuck your left hip under, and then take your right knee onto your bolster on the left side of your mat, and then you come into a reclined twist, which should feel nice after all those back bends. And then we'll come on to the other side. So press into your right foot, untuck your right hip, lengthen your legs out, allow your spine to unravel. And then take your bolster over to the other side and tuck your, bend your left knee, tuck your right hip under. And <laughs> I'm trying to do this whole class without taking this mic pack off. Um, okay, so lie here. Your left leg is on the bolster now. Okay, and then roll back on your back, untuck your hip, let your spine unravel, and then you're going to take your bolster and place it underneath your knees. And you're gonna lie back on your back for Shavasana here. And you're going to stay here and I will sit up and read you the I Hope You Dance poem one more time. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. You get your fill to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leave you empty handed. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Whenever wonder closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance and that when you get the choice to sit out or dance, I hope you dance. I hope you never fear those mountains in the distance. 
Never settle for the path of least resistance. Living might mean taking chances, but they're worth taking. Loving might be a mistake, but it's worth making. Don't let some hell-bent heart leave you bitter. When you come close to selling out, reconsider. Give the heavens above more than just a passing glance. And when you get the choice to sit out or dance, I hope you dance. So reflect on how connecting with your proprioceptive system, your vestibular system, your visual system, and practicing balance allows you to make the choice to dance rather than sit out in your life. and how you're going to take this practice off your mat and into your life. And then when you feel ready, you can begin to wiggle and stretch out, bend your knees, roll to your right side. You're gonna make your way up to a seated posture and we'll finish with our Mudra for balance is the Shunya Mudra today. And this mudra helps to improve balance. It's good for your ears, earache. It decreases vertigo and tinnitus. So everything that we've been talking about with your vestibular system. But this mudra is only recommended for short-term use. Um, so if you hear this and you think, oh, I have really bad balance, I'm going to use it every day. That's not what it's meant for. You can use it for a short amount of time and when your balance improves, then you're going to stop. Or if your tinnitus stops, then you're going to stop. But it's not one meant to be used every day. You're going to take your middle finger, bring it down to the base of your thumb, and then curl your thumb over your middle finger, leave your other fingers extended, and then rest that on your lap. And close your eyes. We'll sit with this for three minutes in silence. So bring your left palm up, your right palm down. We'll finish with our 
uh, mudra series to gather the fruits of your practice in first to yourself and then to offer them out to the world, making space with breath and a sigh. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu Loka samasta sukino bhavantu Loka samasta sukino bhavantu May all beings be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. So thank you so much for joining me for episode 364 of Yoga with Melissa, this class to improve your balance. And thank you to all of you who voted for this class on Facebook. I asked you earlier this week which class you wanted, and you overwhelmingly voted for Dancer Pose. So thank you for contributing to that. You can contribute to the classes by liking them and commenting them and sharing them. That really helps. So let me know in the comments what balance pose you would like next. I'm thinking about doing chair pose. So chair pose is a balancing pose if you do it standing up on your toes with your heels off the ground. It's quite a challenging balance pose. Or I'm thinking of doing hasta padangustasan. That's, uh, you know, we do... Uh, lying on our back, hand to toe, big toe pose, where you do the hamstring stretch. You can do that one standing too, and it's quite a balancing challenge. So what one between those two would you like next? Chair pose or hasta padangustasan? Let me know which one you would like next. And I would like to thank Sonia, Diane, Donna, and uh, for your donations, and Caroline for your December donation. Uh, our team has raised $2,259 for December of our $3,500 goal. If you're receiving value from the Yoga with Melissa classes, you can donate uh, below here. And as I say, you can donate of your time by letting me know which class you would like next. And in the comments. And... I also have some things for you. If you would like a beautiful infographic of my off the mat strategies for a healthy vestibular system, and you saw from my statistics at the beginning that when you're on uneven surfaces, the vestibular system is really important for your balance, then go to melissawest.com slash 364, scroll down, put in your email address, and we'll happily send that to you. Today we did some, uh, lots of, different things for balancing and I'm going to show you if you're a member where to go and get a brain yoga class to help you with your standing balancing poses and one of my members did it this week and she said wow that was a really challenging class and in fact there's a whole series that breaks down this class because a lot of members found it challenging so after we did that brain yoga for standing balancing poses, we did a whole other series of brain yoga breakdown classes. So there's a whole bunch in the membership community of brain yoga that will really help you with your balance. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes. And we'd love to welcome you into our membership community. Um, there, I support you more in your practice. Our leadership team supports you. And it's a great community where we support each other in our maintaining our daily yoga practice. So I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our Pacific Ocean. May you be as rooted as the trees in our forest. And may you be as strong as our mountains. Om Shanti. Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.